Guys, welcome to TGS. Today, we're gonna meet with Ed Solomons and look at his guns, all of which are Kriegoffs. Well, I thought, uh, you know, as you've, you've asked, it seemed appropriate. Um, yes, yeah, so I thought I'd just bring them out and show you what I've got, all the, the most interesting bits and pieces that might be uh, of interest to people and talk through what they are. Sure. Let's rewind to the beginning of your story. When did you get your first Krieg off? Because it's clearly a, a bit of an obsession. Yeah, exactly, I don't know. I think it would have been 2001-ish. Okay, um, and what did you shoot before that? Uh, the gun before that was a 682 gold Beretta trap gun. Oh, so nice. one, of the, one of the older ones, not the goldie. The black one. action one. Yeah, black action, yeah, you've got it. Uh, so not as old as the silver action, but um, yeah, shot that um, big heavy gun. For whatever reason, I'd always wanted a Krieg off. Um, managed to get a, a sort of a decent deal on one. And yeah, never looked back really. Been, been with them for a long time now, so nearly in the veterans. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the one closest to me, or the one in the middle. You're cool. Let's go with the one in the middle, because you've had this one the longest. Yeah, um, out of these three, this is the... Uh, the, the oldest one, so this is actually the action that I won the world fit us with. In um, 2001. In, in 18, yeah. 1864, I think it was. Um, 2014. Just yeah, just for, uh, for reference, just, oh, yeah. back in the mists of time. Um, originally, it was set up as a trap gun. So again, I've always shot, as you know, for my clay guns, the step rib trap barrels, which will Were these your original barrels? Uh, or have you got a few sets? I've got a few various sets of bits and pieces, so they might be, I'm not sure, I've lost track now. Um, but yeah, so this had this action, um, step rib trap barrels, and the heavy Krieg off two inch extended chokes at the time, and my custom stock on. Um, now I use this action as a parkour spec, so much lighter barrels, fixed choke, a lot of game shoots. I tend to shoot this on bigger game days where I know I'm gonna be doing a fair bit of shooting because the barrels are so light, it's just yeah. less fatigue really because um, yeah, if you're putting a lot of lead through it. It's a bit it's of a effort bit, to swing this absolute a, beast. I love, sh I love shooting that, but yeah, if you're going through 400, hundred, 500 yeah. shells on a day, that can be a little bit uh, a little bit tiring. So this is the flat rib parkours, lightweight barrels, fixed chokes, three quarters and full. Um, again, all I use this for is game shooting. So, and generally speaking, when I shoot this, it's at better stuff. Um, so I don't really feel the need to open it up. Um, obviously now, with the non-toxic thing coming in, that's going to need to be addressed for obvious reasons. Perhaps a trip to Teague's. Yeah, um, so Teague do all of the aftermarket choke work on, on the guns I do have stuff done on. So yeah, I've got complete confidence in those guys. Uh, this has actually got a standard trap spec stock, which just shoots really nicely with, with the parkours for me. And you are left-handed, so uh, yeah, all big left-handed palm swells. Yeah, uh, left-handed guns, and actually, the only stock on this table that is a custom stock is on the other gun, which is the one immediately in front of you, if you want to have a uh, Yeah, we'll just to uh, take a quick segue. The real difference between the parkour and the super sport barrels is that the parkour has a solid mid-rib, correct? Uh, so there's a few differences. So the parkours and the super sport barrels, or the, the K8, traditional K80 barrels, parkours has got a flat top rib, so it's a complete true flat rib barrel. Um, it's got the solid mid-rib, which you would think, with the K80 barrels having no visible rib in the middle, that would make them heavier. It actually makes them lighter because they can take weight out of the thickness of the tube because they can brace the barrels with the, with the mid-rib. Um, long story short, it's a much livelier, faster handling gun, which personally for clays I find a little bit too fast for my tastes. However, there's plenty of people, as you know, who shoot the parkours incredibly well. Um, Mark Windsor shoots the traditional parkours, I think, and he doesn't miss too much. He's so quite it's, good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly not a um, it's not a handicap. It's just it's it just can change the beast yeah. completely. Um, and these uh, barrels are just interchange like that. Uh, no, they do need fitting. I mean, you probably could, to be fair, take a set of barrels off, but they should be sent to off have to have them own, get them fitted up. Same thing with the four end irons, you know, because otherwise you're going to get stuff grating and wearing, which is not not okay. Got in front of you. That is the action that was actually made sort of a, a commemorative action for winning the world, FITAS. It's the gun that I, you've probably seen me shooting the most because I just think it's a, a stunning bit of kit. It's a custom engraving based on a San Remo and did it from, from scratch, pretty much described what I would like. Um, and Catherine Non, the engraver, did a sketch and I was like, yeah, that's it. Nice. Um, so that was the, probably the easiest uh, easiest design phase they've ever had because I just pointed out, oh, that was really good. So this is um, a, this, what pattern is this one? So that is a custom version of an Asprey scroll. 
Okay. Um, it's got a slightly different finish. I can't remember. It's got a nitride finish or a coin finish. I can't remember. It's got one of the two um, and a gold border. And as you can see on the back of that, it's also got my initials inlaid in gold, which is pretty cool. You do love gold. You have a load of pheasants on this side. Yeah, so I've got pheasants on that side, English partridge on that side. Lovely. And a fairly cool sort of little commemorative yeah. plaque to remind me that, you know, World one, day, champion. one day I was quite good. Um, but no, I, I genuinely love love this action, love shooting it, get a great deal of enjoyment from owning it. Um, Spec-wise, this is sort of my like, clay shooting setup, if you like. Step rib trap barrels, which are the heaviest barrels that Kriegoff make. Do you know what they're weighing at? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what um, bore size it is? 18.6, I think they're all 18.6. Okay. Um, you might need to fact check that. But Someone asked the, the other day. Um, the, the details. I'm not a details well, man. Should we have a look quickly? Yeah, if you like. Yeah, whilst you talk about it. Um, it's got a 12 to 8 mil tapered rib, um, a little step in it, and this has got the custom made heavyweight T chokes. So, you found a. 18.6. Oh, there you go. That was good. You know everything. That was a good guess, wasn't it? Do you think it makes a difference? Have you ever worried about it? Uh, worried about it? No. I, I'm, I wouldn't say my views are well known on this because they're not. My views are. I'm not a massive fan historically of fibre wadded game shells. I make no bones about that. I've always shot where I've been allowed to plastic out of choice. And the sort of stuff you shoot at, it yeah, probably helps. It does make a difference on the on the bigger stuff for sure. If I knew I was going to be just only ever shooting fibre wads, I would probably ask if it was possible to have a set of barrels made with a tighter bore, so 18.4 or something like that. In reality, for the number of times I do it, and now obviously going down the steel route, it's kind of a bit of a redundant. Yeah, it's redundant, really. I'm going to be shooting hydro wads, which act as a plas wad, so they seal the chamber up perfectly. Don't need to worry about it. Within reason, I'd say more open bore the better. Um, but yeah, just from a fiber perspective, yeah. being picky, I'd go tighter. But yeah, it's not a big concern of mine, really. And to be fair, on a lot of the shoots, uh, they're fine with you shooting plastics. You'll ask, you say, especially down in Exmoor, say, you're okay shooting plastics. Yeah, shoot what you want. Fine. If I'm allowed to, I'll shoot them. Um, but uh, there's a popular, there's a popular <laughs> view that uh, yes, I can un imagine the comments, opinions. comment section is going to be um, blowing yeah. up with that. Well, one, I presume yeah. nowadays you're probably just on hydro rods, given I know your opinions on them. Exactly. Yeah, I shoot hydro rods on everything I can now. Um, the stock was custom made for you. You said that was custom made for me. Yeah. Um, you can see I've had to move it around a bit. I've through various um, health issues I've got. One of the things that happens to me on a regular basis, my weight goes up, down, left, right. Obviously with your weight changing and your shape changing, your stock dimensions need to change. Um, I haven't stepped foot in a gym for over two years now. I've had some issues with my guts. I've probably dropped two, two and a half stone. So basically nothing fits me at the minute. Hence it, um, it's coming to your face and everything to yeah, account for lack everything's, of Yeah, everything's out of the way at the moment. fortitude. Um, probably that, that is the gun that I will shoot the most uh, stock dimensions at the moment mm -hmm. until I sort myself out. But. Um, I've got more important things to do than that at the minute. So yeah, it's uh, that. If I just had to pick up a gun at the moment just for pure enjoyment, mm. it'd be that. Oh, it's just beautiful. However, going on to the enjoyment factor. Well, can we finish on this one first? Oh right, Stop. yeah. Don't by all rush off. Um, <laughs> what was the stock fitting process like? Did you go out there? How did yeah, that work? Yeah. Um, so I I still maintain that Ralph at Kriegoff is an absolute. Genius. Um, Ralph Sommer, the stocker there, is firstly a super guy, but really, really knows his stuff. So went over. Um, I think we've had this conversation before about my view on people having custom stocks. I think when you go and have a custom stock, you should have something set up already a that you stock. pretty much yeah. know works, where you feel 90, 95% comfortable with it. I was at that stage where I was like, yeah, I'm fine with this. It was a pretty average looking piece of wood, it had bits and pieces stuck on it, been jacked up, played around with all over the place. But I knew it shot well, and things like, for example, the grip, I knew needed a bit of work. I had to play around with the pitch a little bit and just try and get a better contact in the shoulder. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I pretty much knew what I wanted. So went over, picked a blank, which I still maintain. I think it's a, a lovely it's piece stunning. of wood. Um, it's had a bit of hammering, and it's. I'm not great at looking after stocks. Oh, they are designed to be used. After and this, this is it. I know a lot of people sort of say to me, oh, well, yeah, you've got pretty guns. You don't really want to go out and shoot them. I don't see the point. So the worst... The worst thing is if you bang a stock or you know it gets wet and it gets dried out, so well, at the end of the season, gets you get it finished. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The metal works not have really it refinished. Go off, you know? yeah. um, I, I, anytime they get wet, I clean them. 
I'm not big into gun cleaning. I I'm not religious about doing it, as you'll see probably when you took the barrels off that. It's, um, it's not spotless. Um, however, <laughs> no, it's not. No, well, um, no, no. But you know, we can't all be perfect. No, no. Chokes. These are sick. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. So the story behind them is I always shot, um, when I was doing a lot of shooting, I had the two inch Kriegoff steel extended chokes, which were absolutely brutal, brilliant bits of kit. I've still got them at home. They kill stuff like nothing else. Heavy for balance, because I've always had a reasonably big stock, so it kind of balances the job out. And I like a slow handling gun. Anyway, they were starting to look a little bit rustic um, through the amount of uh, hammering they'd had Are over they the years. Are they blued or stainless? God, they're blued, but they were starting to become very stainless <laughs> um, because of just, I've got a habit of always I think you've probably seen it, grabbing yeah. some tying them up just out of habit. Um, I think I'd pretty much worn most of the blueing off them. Anyway, long story short, I've always had the aftermarket work done on any chokes and stuff done by Teague, because I generally think hands down they're best at what they do and they're really cool people. Um, Ivan said, oh, if you want, we can make you a set of chokes to match your Krieg off extended chokes, but just have them looking a little bit neater. Oh, they are classy. Like, yeah, perfect. So weighed them up, measured them up, and has literally matched them gram for gram, and they're, they're cool. They literally do exactly what I want them to do, and they hit stuff really hard. I think you've seen, we did a long bird shoot, I can't remember if it was that gun or not, shooting the three eighths, yeah. and no more than three eighths, and just absolutely oh, 100, spanking. 100 yards, yeah, it was. Spanking yeah. stuff. So yeah, they're really, really good, and I don't think you'll see anybody else with a pair of them, which is nice. Until so, now, and everyone's yeah, gonna dun, rush dun, to them. Teague uh, does the, um, it's very similar to this bit in a burnt bronze. I've got a real yeah. So they can, turbos. I think they can do all sorts of finishes on Whatever them. Is it, uh, what do you call it when you've got anodizing? Is it anodized? Mm. No, mm, I don't know. Okay, maybe I'll that up. For, no, let's not worry about it. No, let's cut Bone that tea. Out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, but absolutely. There, if you need any work doing, they're the guys to do it. As far as I'm concerned, they're who I send all my customers to do if they've got any. Yeah, they are. They, they are the best on. for yeah, sure. Super. Weight wise, I think it's probably closer to nine and a half. It's um, it's a big lump, chunky chunky gun. But I've always shot big heavy guns. I've always liked it. But having uh, shot it a bit, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can having considering it's a left-handed custom stock, and you and me are fairly well. You're pretty different to most yeah, humans, aren't yeah. you? Well, you're a very tall up. man, apparently. Yeah. You're very yeah, tall. relatively yeah. speaking. Until I get next to you, and then I look like a midget. Um, but you can pick that up and shoot that oh, very it shoots well, well, can't you? It shoots which very is, well, which is interesting. No beads. No beads. Um, again, no I beads on this either. No, I've always shot very high stocks. Um, I see so much rib that I use the rib itself as a barrel reference. Mm -hmm. So I kind of don't need the beads. You'll notice on the twenty bore there are beads, which we'll come to in a minute. But for general work and clay shooting guns, historically, always shot with no beads. But that's not because you're not visually aware of the barrel, it's I've got so much rib showing that that is what I use as my reference. So it's not the, uh, you know, look at the target and magic happens. It's I'm literally yeah, using you, that as a You've got game. an inch of steel yeah. in front of your eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've always shot like that, I've always seen it, and I just find it more comfortable. Having said that, if I have to shoot a flatter gun, I need beads, or mm. I want beads. Yeah, on. because you need to look at something, you need a reference. I need to have something, yeah, yeah. and if it's, if it's a flatter gun, like for example, coming onto the 20 bore now, um, that is a standard left-handed stock on this. Mm -hmm. There's literally nothing, nothing custom about it. Just a, a factory 15-inch stock. It doesn't fit as such, but I can work around it pretty well. It's not well, a million miles. As you've seen. Um, however, because it's flatter than I would like, I've kept the beads on because I have a little bit more of a reference point there. Um, but should we go on to the 20 bore now? You don't find it inhibits you. No. I mean, to be honest, I only shoot this at game. And you know, when you're shooting game, you're not counting I, sh I feel I shoot it on I don't shoot it on the extreme stuff for obvious reasons I shoot it on some I would say some very very good stuff and with an ounce of four and a half um, I use the whole ultimate 20s now just find a little bit more punchy they're quite a serious shell for I've 24. shot some mental stuff with them um, it's fixed choke half and three quarter one ounce of four and a half shot or five and a half shot early season that's going to wrap up probably 95% of anything you're ever going to see um, so yeah, I I feel that's a perfect example of I shoot that pretty well. I know it's not right, but at the moment, 
Yeah, you might hit a few more birds it, if it was perfect, but yeah, that's not but, why you go game shooting. Exactly. It's not a game of perfection. I want to be able to shoot it and shoot it well, but yeah, I'm not expecting it to be you know, one for one, because that doesn't happen. Taking a quick trip back to your multi-shoke gun, always mm -hmm. 3 8 yeah? Just to clear that up for everybody, because uh, there's I, a lot I, of questions about that. As a, yeah, as a rule, 3 8, three eight purely because I think 3 8 with either the Pro Ones or the Sovereigns, um, Sovereign Parkours, they just seem to hit stuff yeah. so hard. We've, um, we've established there's very little out of range for that combination. Yeah, they, they reach a long way. I've got confidence in them. Um, I would shoot say, less now, probably, knowing how targets have come in, generally speaking. I wouldn't feel out of place shooting skeet and skeet on most of the stuff I see now, and a couple of people who do and do it very well. So, and with an appropriate shell, you're not that disadvantaged. Exactly. Um, but yeah, for, if I had to pick a, a choke to just rely on for general purpose work and shooting everything, it'd be 3 8. You can shoot trap with it, you can shoot skeet with it, you can shoot sporting with it. Yeah, yeah, you're all set there. And if you want to play around with shells, you've got a bit of flexibility too. 20 ball. This is really beautiful. It's different, which I, I like. I get an enormous amount of enjoyment shooting this. I mean, this season, to be fair, probably shot as many days, if not more days, with my 20 bore as I have my 12s, because I just, I enjoy shooting it more and more each year. Uh, like I said, I won't take it on the extreme stuff, although having said that, on probably half the drives that you do on so-called high bird shoots, it would be okay, it's just when you go to the, the sort of the next level up, it, it, you kind of lose the ability. And I don't see the point, you know, I know the people who shoot 32 and 34 gram shells for a 20 bore. Uh, if you're gonna do that, you may as well be shooting a 12. You know, the whole point of this is to try and scale it down. The beauty of this as well is on being in the Midlands, we don't have a great deal of mountainous classes, terrain. Yeah, lumpy terrain. This enables you to back your shell choice down and shoot at stuff that you feel a bit better shooting at that you wouldn't take. I mean, there's stuff around here that I would you know, shudder to, to put a gun up to with a 12, but if I'm shooting a 21 gram shell through a 20 ball, fine. Suddenly you feel, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's it fine. becomes a much more sporting opportunity. Yeah, and within you know the spread between 21 and 28 grams and playing around with shot sizes, you can cover a fair bit of ground with that. Like I said, you can go up to 28 gram four and a half, which will go almost up to anything most yeah. people are going to shoot at and down to 21 gram sevens and it's a really enjoyable gun to shoot color case hardened monarch engraving so it's all hand engraved uh, again just i think a beautiful bit of kit super super light 32 inch barrels mm -hmm. uh, fixed chokes half and three quarter a, a standard gun if you like um, you say super <coughs> light that is that is a by, by your frame by, of reference by my because it's about seven and a quarter pounds seven and a half pounds yeah probably <laughs> It's a bit. Yeah. You might need to go back over this and do some um, do some research because I'm I say I'm very much not a details guy. It's light by my standards. Yeah, I'd have yeah. thought seven seven and a half is going to be ballpark. Um, Checkering's quite coarse. I like that. Very yeah, practical. it's a, a nice nice grippy stock. Um, that is a standard left-handed stock. I've also got a standard right-handed stock because we've got quite a lot of customers who want to you know, have demos with stuff, which we'll come on to later. Um, and if you're coming for a lesson with Ed Solomon. Okay, standard, standard left-handed, standard right-handed. That's going to cover if anyone wants to have a play with it, if they're thinking about getting one. Great, I can just literally bolt in, bolt out, put the new stock on, there you go, shoot it. Um, really, really good bit of kit. So beautiful to look at. Incredibly enjoyable to shoot. Um, yeah, that's, that's becoming one of my sort of regular favourites now. You're growing up, clearly. I wouldn't go as far as that. Yeah. Getting I'm older. Side getting, by getting, side getting next. <laughs> the Krieg of Essentia. <laughs> yeah, very nice gun, incidentally. But yeah, not for yeah. me. <laughs> do you want to go on to the... Any other questions, or do you want to go on to the... Um, is there anything else you want to cover before we uh, um, There's nothing off the top. It's kind of like you, when you've got used to having stuff, you take it for granted a little bit. So again, like questions that people ask, oh, what about this, what about that? I don't give it a second thought. Like you said, with standard up weights and bore size, I kind of go, oh. Uh, How much does it know. weigh? That much. Yeah, about this much. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just interesting to go over, you've kind of got three very different setups and bits of kit there. How much are they? Give or take. This is obviously priceless. Yeah, that, that's, that's priceless. Um, I think you're looking ballpark to order one of those, the Colour Case Hard Monarch, I think that's middle 30s at a stab, so 30. 334-ish. That's a custom, I'm trying to remember what my, I've had to get them valued for insurance. Um, 
I'd say again, 30, 30 low 30s and yeah, whatever. They're not cheap guns. But no, they're not. But look, you've they're never they're felt not, undergunned or they're, underdone. Look, they're, there's, there's no one's ever going to say that any of the Krieg offs are cheap, right? They're, no. they're not. You can pick up some real bargain you can get, you can older pick, second-hand yeah, You ones, can get some older second-hand but stuff. But they're not quite like this. But you're not going to find anything where you say they're cheap. And yeah, anyone who, who says yeah, they are cheap, they're obviously living in a different world to me. Um, are they worth it? Yeah, 100%. You know, I've, I've shot them for over 20 years now, and genuinely, I could, if I wanted to, shoot anything. I choose to shoot these. I know, obviously, I'm biased because I'm associated with the brand and I'm a sponsored shooter and stuff. However... But it's a choice you made. It's Yeah, yeah. It, believe me, if I didn't want to be with them and shooting them, I wouldn't be. Um, they've been incredibly supportive to me over the years. I love the product, genuinely. I don't think there is a better piece of kit out there. Um, yeah, I've got a massive amount of time for them and I'm always going to sing their praises because I genuinely think they're fantastic. Are they cheap? No. Are they good? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that's as simple as that. And that's pretty much life, isn't it? You know, generally speaking, you can get some stuff where you go, oh, that's a genuinely nice surprise. It was cheap and it was good. But more often than not, you kind of get what you pay for. To, to guarantee. Obviously, the difference between you know, something that's that price point and, mm. for example, coming on to the, the demo gun, the standard sort of arabesque scroll the basic, setup, which is your, your kind of entry level. There's a massive difference in price there. It's about 15 grand? Yeah, so I think you get you pick one up for no, no 13, 13, 14. And so it's, still, it's, look, still serious money in anybody's It's book. going to shoot exactly Mechanically, the same. this is identical to that and that, okay? Yes. There's less time spent engraving it. This is laser engraved, um, that's hand engraved. There's no extra fanning around done with it. It is very much a tool, um, standard adjustable stock, not a custom stock. You know, there's, there's different areas you can up-spec things to, um, but this shoots just as well, mechanically, as a 20, 30, 40, 50 grand gun yeah. of the same make. But it's they purely... are more beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's... Guns are always on that weird exponential curve, right? It's, yeah, You can get a gun for 1,500 used that will kick it's ass. Every, everybody's got their own view on what value is and at the end of the day life's pretty boring if you just have stuff that you need you know we could all shoot 400 quid guns and eat um, bread and butter yeah drive to work in a ford fair fiesta exactly. 2010. what do you work hard for what do you you know yeah. grind away week in week out it's so you can have nice stuff and do nice things it's not for everybody and that's cool um, we all choose to spend the money we and like somewhere. we said you know you can you can see there's there's people who've won you know majors with second-hand Maruku MK38s, which are superb bits of Unbelievable. kit. Unbelievable. And you could probably pick one you'd know better than me. Seven to eight hundred quid. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> sub one grand, you could get a gun that is so legit win a world championship. capable of winning a European or a Worlds. Well, that goes to show you that, yeah, you don't need to spend mega money on something. And I don't think anyone's ever said it's nicer and it's a little bit more polished. You start to appreciate, you know, better trigger pulls, um, better quality, better service. I mean, the the service that you get with, with Krieg off UK is, is literally world-class. You can send something off on Monday and a lot of the time it'll be back with you by Wednesday, which that is, is exceptional. insane. I'm uh, to believe it's very is, similar in America. Yeah, um, I think, to be honest, wherever you go, the Krieg off service, I don't think you, are, you yeah. will find You're buying into better. a brand. And it's, it's, really a, it's a brand and it's, it's kind of like a family, to be honest there. You do feel like you're part of a family and you get looked after whether you're you know, someone who's just bought your first one or whether you're someone who's been shooting one for 30, 40, 50 years. Um, yeah, I've got a massive amount of time for them, so I'll always sing their praises. One of the questions that I got, the reason I bought this along, one of the questions I got asked when we did that Q&A thing on Instagram the other week uh, was, do I have guns that people can shoot? Firstly, I'll always say people can shoot my guns if they're appropriate for them. They're not appropriate for most people. Are you a world champion? Yeah. No, <laughs> but you can't touch my guns. <laughs> um, you know, the stock dimensions on my standard guns yeah. are not particularly friendly. The 20 bore is very shootable, um, but I've got very much, uh, thanks to Kriegoff and Alan Roan, I have got a set of demo guns with the interchangeable barrels. So I've got standard arabesque action, and you can see in the case, we have the standard 32-inch parkours barrels with thin wall brileys and the 32-inch K80 Super Sport, what we class as Super Sport barrels, the, the standard the sporting barrels ones, yeah. uh, for the rest of the world. Adjustable left-handed and right-handed stocks. So 
if people are on a lesson, which you know, quite a lot of people that are sort of under my wing, they'll never get pressured into it, but one way or another, a lot of them end up shooting career goffs. This is normally the first step there. I mean, Dan, Dan Vallis had his gun away for a service, um, left-handed shooter, had a lesson booked. You know, oh, can I shoot one of your demo guns? Shot a left-handed demo gun and next week he bought one. You know, that's I'm not saying that happens every week, but a big part of it is if people are looking to maybe branch out and try something, I always say, yeah. get a chance to actually pull the trigger on it. And having the adjustable stocks, left-handed, right-handed, parkour's barrels, super sport barrels, you can kind of cover off 90% of what people are going to want. Then on the game shooting side, if people do want to have a shot with the 20 ball, which again, quite a few people do want to have a little bit of play around, same deal, if they're left-handed, no problem, it's a standard dimension stock. If they're a right-hander, it's a 30-second job for me to put the wrench in, take that stock off, put the right-handed one and go, yeah, let's go out and shoot it. So it, that's easy. It, it's an interesting thing, this, this sort of top-end gun world, isn't it? Because you don't gain a huge amount other than pure confidence. Yeah, confidence. Um, you've obviously got what you've seen here is the, the sort of the heart of the gun is the action. Mm -hmm. And mechanically, that is the same on all of them. It and it's an unbelievable, absolutely sweet action. Bomb really proof, okay. But what you've got is the ability with the different stock specs and the different barrel specs to cover off an absolute multitude of options. Yeah. So if you want to shoot a high rib gun, you've got options for high ribs. If you want to shoot a lighter, faster handling gun to shoot game with, you've got the parkours. If you're a shooter who responds better to you know, faster handling guns, you've got parkours, and then the parkours X kind of in the middle. If you want something steadier and slower, you've got the K80 Super Sport. You know, there's so many variables that you can play around with in standard stock specs. Then you can go down the route, custom stocks. You can literally make what you want here, which is, you know, again, part of the luxury <laughs> brand, if you like. So, well, what you want, have it. If you want a high rib, Let's make it a high rib. If you want this, you, they'll make it work. Yeah. Whereas if you're buying a 6A2, yes. it's a 6A2. You can have it in 32 or 30 inch. Perfect. Or yeah. 28 inch if you really want it. Back yeah, if, you, if, if, yes. you, if you really want to have a terrible resale value, you can have it in 28. Um, well, you can buy it cheap. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, there's, uh, it's, uh, hopefully that's been interesting for people. And yeah, there's a lot of, uh, lot of lovely bits of kit there. And so I really do enjoy using them every time I get them out, which to be fair isn't. Oh, outside of game season is very, very rarely now, but I love having them there. Um, and it's just nice to, it's nice to have nice stuff, right? It's part of the game, isn't it? Yeah. Better than a bagel. Oh, I'm sure there'll be someone in the comments section who'll uh, explain to you how they won the US Open in uh, 1942 with a 870 pump and a bagel with the 32 gram nine cartridge. I didn't but see many of those about this Strange, year. isn't it? You yeah. never do. Wait, thank you very much for sharing your collection with us. It's extremely varied for a lot of guns that could be extremely the same. Really shows off how much variety Krigoff is and how much you have bought into these guys personally. Yeah, and, and this is kind of why I bought a bit of a selection of stuff really, because just so you can see what's possible really, there's no point in bringing the same gun that looks, yeah, three, same spec three times that looks slightly different because it's got different wood and different action on it. Try to cover off as, as many of the bases as we can here and yeah, hopefully it gives people a bit of an insight as to what the brand's about and what you can and can't do. And your obsession. Yeah, I wouldn't go far as saying that. But do you I own any other guns? It. I have a 32-inch step rib Beretta 391 semi-auto, which I bought, I reckon, 10 years ago um, for pigeon shooting. It had to be more than 10 years ago. Pigeon shooting and doing the newly released three-shot semi-auto shoots. Um, never shot it. Lie. I shot it once. <laughs> and I shot a fox with it. So that's it. So, yeah, so that's, that's why I didn't make it here today, because you don't why, really I did, Yeah, it. I didn't really think it would be too much of a... So yeah, if anyone wants a 32-inch <laughs> step grid Beretta 691, hook a brother up. Yeah, um, this, is, this is it. And I don't see the point in just having stuff for the sake of it. These guns get used. Um, this gun probably gets used as much as anything else, the, the demo gun. But yeah, if, if I've got them in the safe, I want to be able to use them. So No room one. for safe queens. Yeah, what's the, I don't see the point. You know, if you're going to have something nice, use it. And they say there's, they're not going to break. And I mean, if I can't break them, no one's going to break them. And like I say, give it a bang in the field or knock it around in a pigeon hide and you happen to put a dent in the stock, get it refinished. It's simple as that. Yeah, simple.
Thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.